Can you at least touch three people and say, he's wonderful. He's wonderful. Yes, Lord, he's wonderful. To God be the glory for the things he has done. He has done marvelous things. So we praise him from every blessing and every benefit that he's granted. And the truth of the matter, he is worthy to be praised. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, none of us would be here on today. So can you give God praise just for being alive on today? Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah again. Praise the name of the Lord. Ask that everyone please stand for the word on today. There's a word I want to share with you. And hopefully this will bless you. And I will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And I'll begin reading at verse 24. The NIV version says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run? But only one gets the prize. All right. Run in such a way as to get the prize. All right. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. I want to stop right there. I want to talk, and I know it's bad English. I want to talk from this subject. What are you running for? Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, what are you running for? Mm -hmm. I can remember in elementary when we were released for recess. The entire class would just take off running. And we would run as fast as we could. And we had a teacher that would constantly remind us, what are you running for? It will be there when you get there. Did you go to that same class? We didn't really know why we were running or what we were running to, but we were running and just constantly running. Brothers and sisters, unlike my elementary class, this time as a grown Christian man, here in the text, we are not just running, but we are running to win a prize. And Paul uses two of his favorite metaphors in this text. He uses running and racing to emphasize as believers, we must run in such a way that we win. And not only that we win, but we win a prize. Paul explains how to run and why we are running. And although in other contexts, Paul focused on the prize itself. For in Philippians chapter 3, he says, I forget those things which are behind. And I press toward those things which are before. In other words, I have amnesia of the past. My past hurt, my past pains, my past disappointments, my past frustrations, and I run with acquisition of a prize in the future. So here the emphasis is on how to run the race. And saints, you should know 
Uh, one just doesn't show up to the Olympic Games and expect to compete and win without significant training. You ought to at least do some jumping jacks. Do some push-ups. Do some sit-ups. So you just can't show up and expect everything to be in order just because you showed up. You can't show up to sing if you didn't show up to choir rehearsal. You don't need to be teaching Sunday school if you didn't show up to teacher's meeting. So Paul mentions the emphasis of self-discipline of an athlete. And he says the athlete forsakes certain privileges and freedoms because he or she doesn't want to do anything that might hurt their training regimen, and jeopardize their victory. And so Paul says, you don't need XX baggage. You don't need dead weight. And you must be done away with anything that hinders you from winning. Imagine standing near the starting line at the marathon. And as we survey the runners at the starting line, we notice a brother who has a huge backpack. <laughs> He's pulling a little red wagon. And it's piled up with a lot of stuff. He has his stereo, has his TV, has his iPhone, his computer, his coffee maker, his barbecue pit. His golf clubs and his pit bull named Apollo. And when everybody calls him out and asks, what are you going and where are you going with all that stuff? And he answers and says, you never know what you might need along the way. Now, we laugh about that and we smirk about that. But li listen to this. Look at your attempts to run this race and carry unnecessary stuff. You got bad habits, empty relationships, foolish priorities and possessions, short-lived pleasures. You're dealing with OPP, other people problems. But you have enough nerve to say you're running. But you're carrying excess baggage. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you really running to win? So John Bunyan, the author of the classic Pilgrim's Progress, advised Christians on how to respond when the sins of the world call us, seeking to distract us and get us off course. He quotes as he says, let me alone, come not near me, for I'm running for heaven. If I win, I win. And if I lose, I lose. But let me alone because I will not hear. So in other words, I believe John Bunyan was saying it like this. I don't need to hear your commentary. I don't need to hear your criticism. I'm running on mute. I got heaven <laughs> in view. Y'all better talk back to me in here. Saints, if you're going to run, you need to run and let no one hinder you. I hear the old saint saying, I'm running for Jesus and I'm not tired yet. Saints, this race that we are running takes effort and discipline. You must discipline your mind, your heart, and your body, even in the midst of tests and trials. It's going to hurt. Keep running. You're going to have some obstacles. <laughs> Keep running. You're going to have some disappointments. Keep running. People are going to let you down. Keep running.
keep running. Some people that started with you are not with you now, but keep running. And the reason we run, we do it because of the gospel. I'm about to start preaching now. You do know what the gospel is. The gospel is good news. And you need to understand the good news of the gospel is Jesus died for our salvation. He was buried in a grave. But he rose on the third day. And the victory is that he got up. And since he was resurrected from the grave, you can be resurrected from anything that's holding you down. So keep running. So here's two nuggets I believe Paul is highlighting in the text. And I'm done. Number one, you must run with purpose. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, run with purpose. Let me help you real quick. Your purpose in life is chosen by God and not by you. It's not negotiable. It's like calling water wet. You can't change that fact. And there's no changing in your purpose in life. And you must understand, it's more than just being a preacher. It's more than being a teacher. It's more than being a singer. You must understand your purpose in life is chosen by God and not by anybody else. No matter what people say about you, your purpose is in God and God will always use you no matter what you go through. I'm preaching, but you're not talking back to me. Sometimes you got to go to hell and back, but trust me, it does not deny your purpose in God. It might be your discipline process where God is working on you and developing you for your next level. I'm talking y'all not saying amen. Because you must remember God is the architect. He has the blueprint. And the Holy Spirit has sealed the permit. And so you are here for a purpose. And no person, no demon, no devil, no witch can change what God has called you to do. Here it is. Let me help somebody. Your square does not fit in everybody's circle. God, I'm talking. Maybe I need to say it again. Some of you missed it. Your square does not fit in everybody's circle. So everybody not going to understand your purpose. They not going to understand your anointing, the favor that's on your life. So here it is. Each of us must ask, why uh, am I involved in this activity? Is it a God activity or is it just a good activity? Just because it's good does not mean it's God. And so you must remember Jesus only did what his daddy told him to do. Uh Uh-huh. And so, therefore, if you're going to run this race, you must run it as daddy tells you to run. Mm. And sometimes you may have to run with your haters beside you. (laughs) So, number one, here it is again, run with purpose help your neighbor next to you say neighbor run with purpose second the text remind us not only should we run with purpose but you must run 
to win. Hmm. Paul lets us know he's not playing in this race. And neither should we. Listen, don't just run. Run to win. Don't just say I'm running. But run to be victorious. Don't jog. Don't walk at a fast pace. But run to win. Everybody in here must understand that winning is important in the Christian race. That's why Jesus declares to us and let us know we are more than conquerors. I'm trying to help somebody in here through Christ Jesus. And so Paul in this text is saying, listen, you're not running for a crown that's imperishable. No, no, no. Take that back. I'm, you're running for a crown that's imperishable, but not for one perishable. The crown that you're running for is a crown that will last forever. Whew. Lord, help me talk in here. This crown does not just last for a season, but it lasts forever. Football teams desire to win the Super Bowl's Lombardi Trophy. But they can only hold it for a season until the next season comes. Basketball teams desire to win the NBA Finals, the Larry O'Brien Trophy, that only lasts for a season until the next season comes. <laughs> but we won. We run to win a crown that would just not last for a season, but this crown will last, somebody shout, forever. When we run, we don't run aimlessly like someone who has no understanding of what it takes to finish this race. We run to reach the finish line. And we know that there is a prize, and that prize comes no matter how we run, but we run because God says we have to run. Yeah. And we run because he says heaven must be in view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Saints, here it is. We are in it to win it. Yeah. Giving up is not an option. Matter of fact, all of us have come too far to turn around now. Matter of fact, you need to look back over your life and see where you come from. And let God remind you it could have been worse. <laughs> but here you are standing strong. Here you are in this worship experience. And you're letting the devil know you did not win. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, he did not win. The devil should have took me out a long time ago. Should have took me out when I was on drugs. Should have took me out when I was on the streets. Should have took me out when I went through the divorce. He should have took me out when I was laid out. But here I am, still here, running this race. <laughs> Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul is our example. He was beaten, he was shipwrecked, and he was in prison, but he kept on running. Saints, you gone through hell and back, but still keep on running. Perseverance is the key. Times will get hard. And some of us are saying times are hard right now. Times will be difficult. And Satan will attack you on every hand. 
Every move you make, Satan will always try to frustrate your progress. Satan was messing with you this morning. Told you stay at home and watch it on Facebook and YouTube. Come on, talk to me here. You couldn't find the right shoes to match. You looked through the closet and said, I don't have nothing to wear. Satan was messing with you. You said your hair didn't look right. Come on, talk to me here. That was Satan messing with you. But keep on running. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, just keep on running. Because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I'm not ready yet, but I'm going somewhere. I'm not ready. So your job is to keep running. No matter what you face in this life. Because you must understand on God's side, we always win. Let me say it one more time. On God's side, we always win. Third time for those that hear me the first two times. On God's side, we always win. Why you say that, preacher? Because if God be for us. I wish I had about five of y'all that'll shout with me. I'll be number six. If God be for us, he's more than the world against us. I'm done, y'all. So here it is as I take my seat. I'm already sitting down, y'all, but that's a... So when you see me singing, I'm not just singing, but I'm really running. When you see me preaching, I'm not just preaching. I'm really running. When you see me shouting, I'm not just shouting. I'm really running. When you see me dancing, I'm not just dancing. I'm really running. Turn to your neighbor for the first time and say, neighbor, keep running. Yes, for the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but he that endures to the end. Can I keep on preaching here? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. I've been running for Jesus and I'm not tired yet. Yes, shout yes, shout yes.